Lord, we soak this street with the blood of Jesus. We soak all Manuka with the blood of Jesus. We soak this nation with the blood of Jesus. And Lord, we cover everyone here and those that are not here right now with the blood of Jesus. We pray for all the hardened family around the world. We pray for consoling grace of God to reach out to them wherever they are. In the name of Jesus. And let it just shout. Amen. Shall we clap for Elevet? God bless you, Elevet. Thank you for your faithfulness. God bless. Um, if you turn to the book of Ecclesiastic chapter 7, verse 14. Ecclesiastic chapter 7, verse 14. Glory to God. It says, in the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider with that question. God has made the one as well as the other, so that man cannot discover anything that will come after him. Use another translation, KJV here, let me see. Solomon, you know, is a man of wisdom. He cannot really doubt the wisdom of Solomon. He propounded this scripture. Some of the things Solomon propounded in our own human thinking was a bit questionable. And last time, when you read the book of Ecclesiastic, especially, the book of Proverbs deals with our daily lives, so it's easy for people to embrace Proverbs. But sometimes, when you read the book of Ecclesiastic, some of his, you know, some of the things he propounded, sometimes it's a bit questionable. But if it is questionable, the Spirit of God will not include it in the Bible. In our own human thinking, it is questionable. But God himself, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, allowed those things to be inspired through him so that we can learn the other side of life. Hello, somebody. So he's saying in the day of prosperity, so there will always be a day of prosperity, a day of abundance, be joyful. When things is going well for us, so we shouldn't be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider, meaning the Bible is saying there's going to be a day of adversity. Let somebody consider God also set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. My favorite book of Job chapter 2, 8 to 10. Job chapter 2, 8 to 10. It's important we look at scriptures this morning. Oh, hallelujah. And he took him a pot share to scrap himself without. Use, use other translation. The Bible is talking about the suffering of Job here. Then Job took a, pee, a piece of broken pottery to scrap himself while he sat among the ashes. And Lord, somebody, his wife said to him, do you still retain your integrity? Cause God and die. And Lord, somebody, <laughs> Job said, you speak as a, fool, a foolish, no, you speak as a foolish woman speaks. Job did not say she was a foolish woman. But Job said, like one of the foolish women. He told her, should we accept only good from God and not adversity? Throughout all this, Job did not sin in what he said. So in a time such as this, most of us, we say things that God would, would not warrant from us. Most of us, we question the integrity of God, the integrity of God's word. Most of us will question the promises of God. But those things shouldn't happen because God is still good in it all, in all, in, in all of these things. Remember, if you look at our sister, there are many people immediately they got married, they were still giving birth and they passed on. They have nothing to show for that, for that ceremony, you know, for the covenant they entered into. But this woman, God have a user to produce nations. And we must also see what God has done and the faithfulness of God over his life, her life. So my, the word I'm taking here, throughout all these things, throughout all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Now the question now, would you sin because we are grieving? Would you ever question God because we are grieving? We must continue to thank God. Remember, there are families that died one day. Their hearts caught fire. Everybody died. Their son, their daughters, everyone, husband and wife. No one there to mourn them, just other people that are mourning them. But here we have a woman that have people that are mourning. The church is mourning her. 
children and we wishers. So she is still blessed. Lord somebody. So it's important to understand that in all these things, if you look at First Corinthians 1 verse 9, he said that God who calls us is faithful. Because sometimes we tend to deny the faithfulness of God. Lord somebody, God is faithful. By him you we are called into what? Fellowship. With his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Are you, are you going to say God is not faithful right now because we are encountering or we have encountered adversity? Pain. God is still faithful in spite of it all. So we continue to worship God. We continue to honor God in spite of what we have seen or what is happening. Remember, she is not an unbeliever. She's a Christian. Many years ago, I saw this man. There's a man called Ishtiwud Anaba. Ishtiwud Anaba is a great man of God from Ghana. They, had, they were having convention. He was already in the camp grant. And he was about to preach. And his son and other, other you know, young people, two, two of his son and other two young people, were driving down to the convention. They had an accident and they lost them. He lost them that same day. He was about to preach. They told him what has happened. He didn't stop preaching. And he stood up and said, the devil stole the children. He said, but the devil will pay with millions of souls. So I didn't even remember yesterday when I was driving, I said, we're going to be more radical for God. Amen. Even now. Amen. In spite, the devil wants to demoralize us. The devil wants to cut off our moral, cut off our you know, desire because we're in a season we believe that God is doing something. We're in a season we, we know that God wants to move us to another realm of grace and glory. And so the devil wants to do now is to demote our passion. Is to demoralize us to question the authenticity and veracity of the word of God. But we must not do so. We must, if anywhere Mama Chapel is right now, she would want us to worship. Hello, somebody. She would want us to honor God. She would want us to even do service five times a week. I'm telling you. Yesterday they were showing me the song she wrote from the book of I Am uh, Psalm 16. And I was reading the song or two days ago. But made, before, when she died, even before Sister Mae got the news, she, 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 she was taking a shower and she saw Mama Chapel that morning with you know, a long hair and she was joyful and she saw Psalm 16. A lot somebody from where she wrote her song. And you know that Mama Chapel, she liked to worship. And she enjoys her worship more than every other person. <laughs> When she's worshiping, she don't care how you're floating. She just let it. <laughs> you still remember? She just, you know, just worship on her own. So anywhere she is this morning, I'm telling you, if there is anything she wants us to be doing right now, is to be in service, is to worship, just to worship God like never before. What was people, I was telling Pastor Pio when, she said, I still want her back. I said, sometimes people come back to this realm when they have not crossed the gate. But once they cross that gate, what they see there, they don't want to come back. Hello, somebody. Somebody can call people back when they have not really crossed over, when they are still negotiating with God. Sometimes God will say, no, don't cross, go back. Sometimes we can be in the gap and call them back. Hello, somebody. But... Once they cross over, it's difficult for them to come back. Because what they see there is so glorious. They don't want to come to this you know, painful world. So wherever she is this morning, she wants us to praise God like never before. Worship him like never before. We owe Mama Chapel more of loving the Lord, worshiping God. Even as she wanted to rejoin the choir. Hello, somebody. Those of you in the worship team owe her to worship like never before. Represent that thing she was yearning for. Please, I hope everybody's concentrating. Amen. So, the loss of our loved ones can be deeply painful, particularly since they play such a key role in shaping our lives and community. Amen. But when we are grieved by the loss of our loved ones, God is quick to offer us His peace, His love, His comfort. Sometimes you don't even know how you overcome certain things 
when you lose loved one. I'm sure nobody in this house today that have not lost a loved one. Almost everybody. I told us some years ago that in this life you will cry one day, no matter how strong you are. One day you will shed tears. Last somebody. In the midst of our mourning, we can be sure the presence of God is with us, even in our sorrow. We can draw near to him in prayer and worship, and he will be with us if we do so. Never quit praying, never quit worshiping, Hello, somebody. never quit honoring God because you, love, you lost somebody. Don't do that because your consolation and comfort still comes from God, still comes from the altar. Hello, somebody. When my Monroe died, she and the wife, him and the wife, you know, crashed and died with other leaders of their ministry. It's like the leadership was wiped out. Some of you know Mice Monroe, right? Mice have two, one son and, and one daughter. I heard the son saying, when I lose my two parents simultaneously, say, I didn't want to move on. So I didn't really want to move on. He said, but something suddenly I realized that my father will want me to keep moving and keep doing the work. She said, when she, he said, when he, when dad called to him, he just started, you know, moving on with where his father stopped. Some of, we must never, we must not stop moving on. We must not stop worshiping in this time and season. We must even worship God more like never before. The other day I was saying, Lord, are we going to do a program this week or not? I was just thinking at home. When I got there, I was talking with Pastor, you know, Pastor Pew and Sister Me. Sister Me is saying, don't stop. We have to do it. We have to keep going. And that encouraged me. Hello, somebody. We've got to keep going because Mama Tapa wants us to worship God the more. Hello, somebody. Our loved ones are often... <clears throat> Often the ones who comfort us when we are hurting. And to lose them can, be, can feel like we are losing our emotional support. We are losing our world. We are losing our mental capacity. But wherever they are, they want you to live for other people. Isaiah 43, 2-3. Isaiah 43, 2-3. You see, God knows that one day we are going to be grieving and all be tempted. Hence, we would need support. Therefore, he gave us his word of encouragement. Amen. If you read the word, you find that there's encouragement all over for every one of us. It's even a cause for us to remain in this world and not make heaven. Hello, somebody. A time comes in your life when you don't want to live in this world. Once you get to 100 years, you want to go home. We only pray that we don't die young. Hello, somebody. But a time comes in your life when you want to leave. If I read the scripture, one of the, the lady I know that got, you know, that, lo- that died you know, about him, um, about, um, is it three weeks or four weeks ago? At the time when she was in the hospital, she really wanted to go home because she was encountering Jesus over and over in her sick bed. She told me, in fact, she said for about 15 days she'd been having an encounter every day. So one of that night, she was in pain. She wanted to go home. So when she woke up and realized that she's still in this land of the living, she now told the sister, say, I'm disappointed I didn't go home last night. <laughs> that was how prepared she was. She was prepared. In fact, when she called me, one of the days she said, I want you to, the doctor told me, you know, to prepare, that I want you to, you know, break communion with me for send off. I said, I can't do that. It was so difficult. I love this lady a lot. It was so difficult for me to. Do that. I say I can. The daughter say, okay. I said, the daughter. I said, what am I? She's okay. Just pray and cover her. You know. I oh, know. She called me to pray and cover her. So I don't want no know how to pray and send her forth like last prayer. I, I don't want to do that. I was struggling. The daughter said, okay. Just pray and cover her. And when I was praying, the Lord asked me to do communion with her. So I quickly said, do you have anything like bread or biscuit there? Uh, bread. She said, no. I said, okay. Why don't you get your daughter bite? I will call you back. She said, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. She was so ready. She said to the doctor, look for anything, look for anything, look for biscuit or whatever. So the doctor got, got a biscuit and, and juice or wine, and we break communion, and after a few days, she was gone. But all I'm saying, she was, she was prepared. She wanted to go home because right there, she was seeing Jesus, she was seeing heaven, so she knew where she was going. And God was doing that to encourage her, look, you're coming to the right place. Hello, somebody. Now, the Bible said, I will be with you when you pass through the waters. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. You will not be scorched when you walk through the fire. And the flame will not burn you. Now watch this. 
I will be with you when you pass through the waters. What does that mean? It implies that God did not promise you of what a pain free life. Hello, somebody. He said, Look, you're going to go through the waters, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you, but you will must go through the river. The Bible is not talking of literal river here, it's talking of the pain of life. Hello, somebody. You will not be scorched when you walk through the fire. It speaks of, of pain and toys of life. And the flame will not burn you. Keep going. Keep going. How about Shakabaha? So for I, the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, and your Savior, give Egypt as a ransom for you. Cush and Siba in your place. Okay, let's leave it here. But all I'm trying to say here is God said, if you go through stuff, you're not going to bow. But he did not promise you hello, a life without pain, a life without disappointment, a life without you know, questioning. Amen. Once in a while, you question everything you know. <laughs> Been a time in my life that I question everything I know. Question everything I know about God some years ago. But even in the midst of that, I knew I was being foolish. I know that God is still good. So you will be in that situation when you question God. But after it all, what next? Are we talking God's people? Amen. Now, all through the Bible, Genesis 20, 28, 15 to 16, have you realized that God did not promise us a pain-free life, but he promised to be with us in the midst of pain and to watch, us over, and to watch over us when we go through it? He said, look, I am with you and we watch over you wherever you go. God was promising who? Jacob. On his way to Padam Aram. But he, but he did not say, look, I will protect you from experiencing pain and humiliation. Hello, somebody. He only said, I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. But I wanted to look at the word. Look, I am with you and we watch over you wherever you go. So when we are going through pain, God is still watching over us. <coughs> when, we lo- when we lose a loved one, God is still watching over us. You may think that you are alone or we are alone. No, we are not. The Spirit of God is still there. God created her. And God knows the day she's going to leave this earth. Whether, it, whether it, it was caused by the devil or natural, whatever it is. So the doctors told her that she have underlying heart issue that was not discovered. She didn't have a heart problem. She, she, prob- she do have high blood pressure once in a while. But they told me that have been under control. <coughs> so on that, but um, this heart issue was hidden. Nobody, and I was told that she's a woman. Any little thing, she just go to the hospital and check herself. But you will wonder why is it that this heart issue was not discovered? Anyway, the devil can take life and make it look like anything. But whatever it is, God is still in control. Amen. Verse 16 B A says, verse, verse 16 A, please be faster. It says that when Job awoke, when, 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 when Job, when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. I'm looking for something. It's like that's, that was some, something happening in all that scripture, there's something before this. So, all I'm trying to say, God is still with us. Remember, you'll be tempted in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 first, first Corinthians 10, 13. It talks about being tempted. It's in spite of all you're going through, that you will still be taken care of. We, however, will not boast. No, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. First Corinthians 10, they say, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to humanity. So everything we are going through today, all that church has been through it. Hello, somebody. And we must not thank God less for the past 11 years we didn't have to bury any member. That means God being faithful. Okay? Now, God is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation, he will also, with it, provide a way of escape so that you are able to bear it. 
even in the midst of all these things, God says, I'm, I, I, I'm still going to take care of you. I'm still going to make a way. In fact, God is closer to us than ever. In a time such as this, I can assure you that God is more closer to the church than ever. If you're, if you're observing him, if you're observing, you will, you will see him. But if you feel broken, question God, question everything you know, you may not know that God is moving. We just saw a scripture in that, Je- in that scripture we read on uh, Je- um, Genesis 28 verse what? Verse 16. Jacob woke up from the dream when God told him, look, I'm going to watch over you no matter what you're going through. And I'll bring you back to the same place you find yourself. Immediately he woke up. He said, look, I didn't know that God is here. Hello, somebody. He said, God is in this place, but I don't know. When, J- when Jacob woke up from his sleep, he said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Sometimes God could be in the midst of all that we're going through, but you may not know it if you are not observant. Many times you could see even when that pain has increased like never before. If you observe and you will discover that God is closer to you than he has ever been. So as a church, even though we are a bit broken and we are mourning right now, I'm telling you, the Lord Jesus is more closer to this church than ever before. Amen. The devil thought oh, that they are trying to reduce us. They have stolen from us. But there's going to be more souls won. Hello. We're going to win more souls. And, the, and God Almighty will do more with the church. That Mama Tepo will be there and be proud of what she left behind. She's one of those who bear this church. Hello, somebody. So let's begin to observe God in the midst of distance. Amen. Don't be careless. When we cry, when we pray, make sure you're observant. You will see that God is closer than ever before. Are we communicating? Now, the very God of creation who knows us better than we know ourselves understands our pain right now. And he is eager to heal us and give us his peace because he himself knows what it means to what? To grieve. Hello, somebody. In the book of John chapter 11, reading 33 and 35. John chapter 11, 33 and 35. Some of you know that scripture. Oh, hallelujah. He said, when Jesus saw her cry, amen, it's okay to cry once in a while. Hello, somebody. And, Jew, and, and Jews who had come with her crying, he was angry in his spirit. Sometimes we can be angry against what the devil is doing, amen, and deeply moved. Hello, somebody. He was angry and deeply moved. This is not a time to just be angry for nothing. It's a time when we're angry for what the devil has done. We should be thinking, what can we do in order to, you know, to, to, you know, to curb the death of this woman and show her that, in fact, we are, we are loving God the more. Then in 35, I love somebody. In verse 35, it says, Jesus wept. This is the shortest verse in the Bible. I love somebody. Jesus wept. So even Jesus himself cried. Hello. It's in, in, there's two places in the Bible where we were told that Jesus would cry. Another one was in Luke 19 41, when he saw what was going to happen to Jerusalem. Hello, somebody. He saw the, as he approached and saw the city, he wept of it. There are many nations now, when God looks at those nations, he's crying. He knows what is coming after them. There are many families, when God looks at them, he just wept. Hello, somebody. So even Jesus himself do cry. But in a time such as this, we also must be strong for other people. Hello, somebody. We can be strong. I've cried about two occasions. Hello, somebody. <laughs> but we leaders must also be strong in the midst of it all. What Mama Tepo wants from us now is to serve God well and to praise him well. She wanted to join choir. And, you know, in this almost, in our, in our last part of her life, that means she's trying to say, praise God the more. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Now, God delights in comforting the afflicted and healing the heartbroken. So in his brokenness, in his bro- <clears throat> so in this brokenness moment, he is ever available to mend our heart. Amen. Isaiah 6, 6, 13 to 14. Isaiah 6, 6, 
13 to 14. So God wants to help you and I. I don't know if I'm communicating. I say more that comfort has sound. So I will comfort you. And you will be comforted in Jerusalem. This is Jerusalem. The Lord says, I should let you know this morning that we will be comforted. Amen. It doesn't matter the challenges, the pain, the coldness Amen. the enemy has released among us. He said, we shall be comforted. Amen. That you will see, you will rejoice, and you will flourish like grass. So in, the, in spite of these things, I will do something that will give you joy. Listen, I will comfort you, and I will do something that will give you joy. Amen. Hello, somebody. Oh, then the lost power will be revealed to his servants, but he will show his wrath against his enemies. All the forces of, the, of darkness that may have conspired to steal her, the, Lord, the Bible said God will show his wrath against them. Amen. So you've got to understand that whenever desires to happen, if you are observant, you will see healing taking place in the land. You will see God doing greater things. No soul goes for nothing. You lost somebody. Whenever a precious soul is taken, God is always doing something among his people. Last Sunday when I was preaching, I did say something. I didn't understand that it was a prophetic word. I don't know if some of you remember what I said. I said I went to a place I was sharing the word. And then I turned, I said, who will be the next? But I say, God forbid. But in the midst of crowd, alas, we are here right now. There will always be somebody who will go first. Amen. We are not praying that it be any of us. Amen. But that is life. So last Sunday, I say, who will be the next? It wasn't like we are wishing. I also said, God forbid. Amen. But sometimes God talks to us in proverb. <clears throat> so we need to understand that that death does not know any personality. Sometimes death can be unchallengeable will of God. But how do you manage it? Many years ago, when I was, you know, I, I got to know my wife. So she, she came to see me, see me. So after I was dropping her off, I just got home, just got to know her. So she came to a place, to my brother's place where I was. Then I was dropping her. For immediately we got there, they told us that they, you know, they, you know just like you have wet feet more. That they, you know, there's a, a market called My One Market, where you have who's is who, almost everybody in that city. If you don't have any shop there, you have somebody that have one. And they told us that the place was burning. So we quickly drove down there. My wife asked me to stay by the side. I didn't know why she didn't want me to fall. She was going to see, because the parents were already there. I said, no, let me go with you. She refused. So I stood there. And I saw this lady. She was shouting. She said, there is no God. There is no God. And she said, if there is God, how can God allow you know, his people to be suffering like this? And she was screaming and screaming. She was all, all by herself screaming, there is no God. And this is what happens to us when we experience pain. If care is not taken, you'll be screaming in your heart, in your heart world, there is no God. But our problem does not reduce the existence of God. It does not reduce the consistence of God. God is still faithful. God is still consistent. We must continue to recognize that in spite of it all, we still have a God who loves us. Amen. Though she's gone, but she's not alone. A lot of people have gone, but she's able to at least leave something behind. She lived, you know, wonderful children. She, lived, she left behind, you know, behind grandchildren. So we must understand that she, still, she was still fruitful in spite of this untimely situation. Amen. Hello, somebody. So God wants to take care of us in this time and season. And I want you to watch it. He's going to heal us Amen. even faster. And he's going to do more like never before. Amen. We will not stop preaching the gospel. We will not stop cutting off the, the plans of the enemy in this nation. Jeremiah 17 verse 14 calls him a God that heals us. Jeremiah, you know, 17, 14, sorry. 17, 14. He said, the Lord, heal me that I shall be healed. Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I'll be saved, for you are my praise. So God still heals in a time such as this. If your heart is heavy, if you are in pain, if you are in confusion, 
You know what she requires of you right now? Mama Tepper wanted to praise God. I didn't even know she wrote a song. I think they're going to sing this song the day we will be having a farewell. And let's remember, it was that I saw it. And I wonder why God showed you, you know, that revelation that morning. And show you now that scripture, you know. You know what, what? Oh, thank you, Lord. You know what she was trying to say? You are a worship leader. And she's trying to say, my sister, keep praising God. Amen. Hello, somebody. She wants to say, look, I want you KMGC members to worship me more. In fact, that is the interpretation of what you saw right now. God just downloaded it to me. Yes, trying to say, my, you know, my sister-in-law said, don't stop worshiping him. If there is anything I want you to do, is to worship him more. Tell the church to worship him more. That's why you see him in a glowing, you know, form with a flowing hair. And look somebody and smile and Psalm 16. Oh. So God is saying we should worship him more. That's what God could have communicated to us through Mama Tapo. <clears throat> Are we still there? So God comforts us. Not only does he comfort us, God uses other people to comfort us. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, 5 to 7. You see, also, also Christians can check out in that we find comfort in more than our families. Whenever we lose, we lose loved ones, even though they supply us our emotional need, comfort, hello somebody, cancels us, but they are not the only one you have. Amen? Hello somebody. Are we here? But we Christians, or whenever we lose love, and we should know that we have other believers that are there to console us. You are not alone. The Bible says, in fact, when we came into Macedonia, we, we, we had no rest. Instead, we were afflicted in every way. And let's remember, struggles on the outside. Have you been there before? This is a man of God, anointed of God, working for God. He went to Macedonia not to have not to have a, a shower in the pool. Hello, somebody. He didn't go there for vacation. He went there to work for God. Yet there were struggles, affliction, pain, you know, fears, in, in, fears inside. Paul was describing his situation in Macedonia with his men. Are we here, God's people? Why didn't God rescue him by the way he was there for God? But God who comforts the humble Hallelujah. Comforted us by the coming of who? Titus. Are you here? Look at that scripture. How did God comfort him? From all the pain. You're not responding. From all the fears. From all the intimidation. The fears on the inside. He said God comforted us by sending us Titus. That means in the time of pain and affliction. If we are there. Close to each other, encouraging each other, encouraging the bereaved, they will be healed faster. God heals us through one another. Amen. Hello. So, and do and not only by his coming, but also by the comfort he received from you. He was talking to other churches that sent titles. He said, when he was coming, he came with comfort from you. Probably with a gift and whatever, with a word of encouragement from the church. He, he came with those words, he went, he went with those words to Macedonia to encourage Paul. And he said to Paul, look, in spite of all you're going through, the church is behind you. Amen. Hello, somebody. He said, I am f- behind you. The Lord is with you people. Don't give up. And that's what we need to do for the foundation of the church, what we need to do for Pastor Pio, for each other, because everyone have lost. He's not the only one that is in pain. We all are in pain. But we must be close because he's more related to her. We must be closer now than ever. We must, you know, we must pay visit. We must give money. In any way we can support, we must save like never before. Amen. Paul was comforted because Titus showed up. Hello. And not only by his coming, but also by the comfort he received from you. He announced to us your deep longing, your sorrow, your zeal for me. So that I rejoice even more. Because I hate the way you care about me. He said, when I heard it, I even rejoiced. You see, he was going through pain, afflicted, fear all over. But when he heard that the church was concerned, lost somebody, when he saw the presence of, you know, of, of, of Titus, he felt, oh, God still remembers me. Amen. That God has not forgotten me. So right now, we need each other 
This is not the time to think why God, why God. I show you a scripture when we started. I think Ecclesiastic, we may have to read it again. Chapter 4, you know, 7, verse 14. Lord, somebody, let's read that. Let's re revisit that scripture again. Hallelujah. So, in that scripture, you realize that God is encouraging us you know, not, to, not to question. In the day of prosperity, be what? Joyful. When it's all going well, just thank God. But in the day of adversity, consider without question. Amen. God has made one as well as the other so that man cannot discover anything that will come after him. Amen. There are things God has allowed to happen. Amen. Hello. I do not believe that anything can happen without God knowing it. When, the, when Job was afflicted, they took permission from God. It's not because God wanted to afflict Job. The Bible says Satan went to the presence of God and received permission to afflict Job. Are we there, God's people? Amen. And God said, okay, you go afflict him, but don't touch his soul. The devil may have taken the, the body of Mama Tapu, <laughs> afflicted her body, but her soul is intact in the presence of God. Amen. If she did not make it, she will not see her in Revelation that morning in the bathroom, happy, joyful, with a flowing hair, with, you know, and with a scripture. That is a sign that she made it home. So we church must be encouraged. We must be radical than ever. We must not allow the devil in this nation to rest. Because when one person is touched, all is touched. It's painful to come to church and realize that her seat is empty. And see the things she does. Every time she's there with um, Pastor, Pastor Winnie walking. I asked Pastor Winnie, said, what did she say last Sunday when you people were counting money? She said she was just doing her funny thing. She said, hey, please concentrate. Let's do the job. <laughs> Hello, somebody. She was always, even, if, if I ever asked Mama Tepo to do something, she never said no. Hardly. Hello, somebody. So Mama wants us to worship God more than ever before. Help me say neighbor. Amen. She wants us to worship God than ever before. Do you really mean it? She just wants us to love God. Amen. Than we've ever loved him before. See, as Christians, we believe that when we die, we have only crossed over to a better life. Amen. Therefore, true children of God do not die. They only fell asleep. Amen. I don't know if you know that. They only fell asleep. You know? And the Bible says in the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 4, 13 to 14. First Thessalonians chapter, chapter 4, 13 to 14, it says, And now, dear, we do not want you to be uninformed. Some scriptures said to be ignorant. Hello? Brothers, concerning those who are asleep. Are you here? So that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. In other words, when we lose loved ones, we have hope. Keep going. We do have what? Hope. Since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, in the same way God will bring with him, Mama Chapel, those who have fallen asleep through Jesus. Now the question that, in our call, that, we, that occurs to mind here is do we believe the scripture? Because oftentimes we come to church, we read the Bible, but we question the Bible. I have chosen to believe the entirety of the word of God. When Billy, Billy Graham started his ministry, there were two of them. One of them started questioning the scripture. And he told Bill, Billy told him that he would believe every word in the scripture. And Billy went ahead to become a great evangelist known around the world. But his colleague diminished and diminished and was no man finally died. But the, Jimmy, Billy, I mean, died at a good old age. Bless somebody. If we believe, either you believe the scripture or you don't believe the scripture. I believe if we, our life is just to live here, buy a new car, live in a good house, have a good cloth. If that is all that we are called to do, then this is a wasted word. I do not believe that, that this life is just these things we are doing. Then, then quit me, God wasted time creating men if we end just like that without having another home or a board. Hello, somebody. As we were there that day, they came to pick her up. 
and I realized they brought. Um, that thing spoke to me. After I was talking with Pastor Louisa, she was telling me that was a moment for her. And they brought the ordinary you know, bag, like is a bulletin bag. I don't know what I call. And they put her there, her body. That's not her soul. That's not her real person. That is her tent. And they zipped it and just took her. The person that used to walk to her house, she walked in and walked out all by herself. And I was thinking, it's just a human being that they just put into a bag and zipped off. So I do not think that our life is what is, is, is about these things we are focusing on. There is more. Are we talking God's people? So if you look at scriptures such as this, we cannot be crying like unbelievers. We have to cry because Jesus wept. We have to once in a while. We can't hold it. But we can behave as though there is no other place. If you're ever grieving and letting, you know, refusing to let it go, then you're thinking that this is where this world ends. Amen. Hello? Amen. Now, if we continue to read in the book of Acts, I love the scripture, chapter 13, verse 36. It says, Now, when David had saved God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. Are you there? He was, he, he was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. His body, not his soul. Amen. Hello. Wow. All through the Bible, you find that, that the Bible, most of the saints that died, the Bible never described them as just dead. The Bible always said they fell asleep. Amen. When you sleep, don't you wake up? Yeah. Hello. Amen. When you sleep, you do wake up. That means... If you are sleeping, if the Bible described David to, to be sleeping, that means that the Bible is trying to say she woke up also. He woke up also. Amen. In the other side of life. Amen. Gosh, people don't die. Amen. That is why the Bible did not say, and David died. No. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible did not say David died. Oh, even, even, Joe, even, even Solomon. Some people say Solomon went to hell, but... I can't really prove that. Even Solomon. Glory to God. Amen. Say, for David, after serving, Mama Tapo, have served the will of God. Amen. For David, after serving his own generation in God's plan, Amen. fell asleep. I don't think the Holy Spirit was foolish to have used this word. I don't think that this is a careless statement. This is an inspired line of scripture. Just to tell us that when we serve God, we don't die like every other person. We only glory to God. We only sleep. Sleep to wake up. Sleep where, mama? If you look at the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 10. The Bible says, so David slept with his fathers in another scripture, confirming that this is not an isolated statement. Are you all listening? Yes, now, this first one we read, sometimes you don't build a doctrine out of a verse. Before you build a doctrine around the scripture, make sure there is one, two supporting verses. Amen. So for you to know that that statement is what? Authentic. You must see it in another verse. Amen. Are we here, God's people? It says again, let's in first king we read again. First, first, first king two verse ten. David. Is it in first king or is that is that first king two verse ten? And David rested, yeah? David rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. Here I say rested, but here I say slept. David slept with his fathers. Amen. Amen. People that are also resting are not in hell. Hello, those that are in hell are not resting. So you must understand that when our loved ones die, they are just resting. If our eyes will be open to see where they are, we'll be begging to join them. <laughs> but not now for, for most of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not die before your time. Amen. I believe this word, Jesus says in the book of um, John 14 verse 1. You can ask question. He said, my father's house, there, there is what? Many mansions. Hello, John chapter, chapter 4, 14 verse 1. 
He said, your heart must not be what? Troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. <coughs> Hello, somebody. You know why he said believe in God? Believe also. He was talking in him not as God. In him as a man. Because he is, he, he is a God himself. He was saying, believe. He was talking on dua. He made a dua statement. Believe in God. Remember, he is God. Though he came to represent God the Father, but he is God. He said, believe in God. Believe also in me, in my person. As a man. A law, because he has already told him to believe in God. He said, now keep going. In verse 1, in verse 2, he says, In my father's house are many dwelling places. Some say many mansions. If not, I would, I, I would have told you, I am going away to prepare a place for you. Amen. You mean there is no place? Jesus has prepared the beautiful place for every believer. Amen. Are we here, God's people? So once you know this, you start rejoicing for your loved one who, who died in the Lord. Hello? As long as they died in the Lord, I can assure you they are in the hand of the Lord. Many, many believers died and resurrected. They saw heaven and they saw hell. That means heaven is real and hell is real. If you also look at the book of Acts chapter 7 verse, verse 60. Acts chapter 7 verse 60 also, the Bible describes Stephen to have fell asleep. Almost all God's people that pass on will say to have fell asleep. Hello, somebody. As 760. The, then he knelt down and cried out. That was when they were, you know, crucifying Steve. <coughs> Stephen. Stephen. In fact, Paul was holding his suit, his clothes, and ordered them to kill him. So why we, they were killing him, the Bible said, then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not chide them with this saying. Let somebody, those who were killing him, were still forgiving them at the point of death. Amen? And saying this, and saying this, he fell asleep. All the wonderful people of God that died, we are told that they are sleeping. Amen. Amen. And one day we will go there to be with them. Amen. So, we, this implies that our beloved mama, our beloved sister is sleeping right now. Amen. She is in the presence of Jehovah. Amen. What does this remind us? What does it, you know, portray? What, what is it communicating to all of us? Hello, somebody. Amen. This shows us that this world, you cannot be fighting for, for spill milk. Are we checking God's people? It is not possible. If you're living, keep fighting for spilled meal. Keep fighting for things that ought not to be. You're wasting your time. Because tomorrow is unknown. And next tomorrow is unknown. Hello, God's people. On Monday, she was sitting there. Sister Ngozi told me that they were sitting close. I think Sister Ngozi was there. She was sitting there. And they were having a round table. Just on Monday, last week. I didn't know that would be her last time of entering this building in the body, but not in the spirit. But also when we look at it, it didn't take us by surprise because sometimes God has shown us things we pray, but God does his own will. God hardly takes us by surprise. It's just that we are not listening when he is what speaking. Oftentimes, when things happen, we start blaming God. We are crying. But God may have told us six months ago. But we did not observe it. So, God's people, what we ought to do right now for Mama is to prepare ourselves. Is to love God more. Is to pursue God more. That's what we ought to do right now. Anything less, she will not be happy. You love somebody. We should go there and win more souls Amen. for Jesus. Amen. Go there and love people. Mama Chapel, she don't keep things in the heart with anybody. <laughs> yeah. She can just tell you something and that is where it ends. She sees you again, she embraces you. She might communicate it the way you didn't like it, but she doesn't have anything in her heart. I love somebody. She just straight, Boom. But never see and think, mm, mm, she's my enemy. She don't do that. Hello? She served God in this house for the past 11 
and a half years. She walked in and came GC on October 4th, 2009. And since that day, she didn't walk out. To have served in, a, in one place for over 11 years. It's been said that Christian change church, sociology tells all that human beings don't stay in one place. So at least some of them move in five years. And then they move house, <laughs> move school, <laughs> move family. <laughs> Hello, somebody. But she stayed in one place for 11 good years. Over 11. Serving the Lord. Is that not a character? Such ten speaks. Hello. Everything we have that child told you, she bought it. Eh? Sometimes she bought it with our own money. We have a lot. There's a, some plates we have not even used. And some buses. She bought those things. She made it happen. She saved and saved. In fact, it was, it was, I think at the time we, we realized that she had done her best. So another person needed to take over. That was when Sister Sarah came, um, Sandra came in. I don't think she requested to, to, to leave that department. Did she request or we asked her? I think we, we asked her to. She, did, she requested. All right. So, but she really served in that department. So now Mama Tepe is saying, my son, my children, my sisters, my brothers, sing to the Lord. Serve the Lord. Because tomorrow is unknown. We're going to stop here now. But I came this morning just to encourage you. Just to know that this life is not permanent. Life is transient. Amen. Everyone is in transition. Don't maintain this body. Hello somebody. And not your soul. We don't know tomorrow. Everyone in this house. I keep saying within 100 years. Now none of us will be here. So, is it because of 100 years you're going to use to hurt people, to pain people, to create problems, just because you have more 100 years? One brother told me here that a man was having issues with somebody, and the man is an older man. He told the man, he said, look, you're not going to be here too long. He said to the man, the person you're dealing with or is going to be here more longer than you. You are already getting older. He said, look, don't have this thing. Just let it go. God's people, this service this morning is to encourage us to worship God more. In fact, that revelation you receive, I do not believe it's just a revelation for, for the family alone. It's a revelation for the whole church. Amen. Why was, was she sing, singing? Why did you see a scripture where she wrote a song? Where she wrote a song from? What is it that well, she just come? God just want to show you, show you that for nothing? I don't think so. God is trying to say, look, Mama Tepo wants us to praise God the more. In fact, if there is anything we need to do, is to even praise God for the next five minutes. As Mama Tepo would love it and bless him. Amen? Amen. Now, soon after that, we will, um, I will say a few things about in the coming days and we will close. Let's call on the elevator. God bless you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you adoration in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mama Chapel want everyone to be happy this morning. Amen. Let's be happy that she made it. And she's a child of God. She died serving God. Amen. Did you guys remember last Sunday when I was dedicating Mark and Nicole baby? You remember? Yes. Eleven, please get ready. So I asked people to share something. So I realized that I was everybody have shared and I was almost we almost about I was almost about to I think I was almost about to say something. And I've just closed that section. She, I think she went to the bathroom, to the restroom. And she just came with speed and take the microphone. <laughs> Did you realize? Did you remember? And she gave a word. Hello, somebody. I was telling my wife that was her last official ministry on it. Hello, speaking from the altar. Amen. So she saved to the last moment. And she wanted us to be seven. Amen. Shall we stand up and praise God on her behalf and worship like she would worship and give him all the praise. Glory to God.
mouth and pray for Natua's family wherever they are right now they go through this emotional roller coaster let's pray for them please everybody open your mouth church pray for Natua's family Holy Spirit of the living God in the mighty name of Jesus we pray for Natua's family Lord we pray for Natua's family everybody pray in my caliber zone Pray for Pastor Pio. Pray for the children. Pray for the loved ones. Everybody open your mouth. Shaka la hando. Ekredo ma caprio zilibrio. Lord, we give you the praise. Lord, we give you all the thanks. In the name of Jesus. Hura baba jande de bo jalabahanda. Lord, we ask for your angel to reach out to their family right now. We ask your angel, to, oh God, to go and carry Pastor Pio on your eagle wings. We ask for your angel to go and start serving that family right now. Holy Spirit of the living God, we are asking for your spirit, your grace, your power. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I honor you. 
Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you thanks. Oh, Lord, Shalabarabu, Father, we thank you for encouragement flowing into your family in the name of Jesus. Everybody pray for the church family here right now. Pray for everyone here. Ask God for encouragement. Ask God for grace. Ask God for power. Lord, encourage every soul. Encourage every brother. Encourage every sister. Encourage every child. Encourage every teenager. Encourage every youth. Father, in this place, we thank you for spirit of encouragement, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we bless your name. Let's ask God to give out the spirit of a praiser. Even as Mama Chapel wanted to praise God more, can worship God more. Let's ask God for grace to praise Him the more. Somebody praise Him, Lord. Give me the grace to praise you the more in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, give me the grace to honor you, worship you, praise you the more like never before in the name of jesus somebody pray the prayer lord we want to worship you the more we want to honor you the more we want to praise you the more holy spirit of the living god receive all the glory receive all the pain all the praise receive all adoration glory to god glory to god Glory to God. Glory to God. She so says, so winner. She likes sharing the gospel. Say, dear Lord Jesus, give me the grace to share your word to your people. Give me the grace to share your word with your creation. Anoint me with a tongue to speak the word. Somebody pray the prayer. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we praise your name. Receive all the glory. Receive all the praise. Receive all adoration. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray again. Pray this, please. Take this prayer. Don't take it lightly. Cancel any debt again. I want you to cancel any debt that the enemy wants to throw against us again. Pray with all your heart. Somebody pray that prayer. Any blood of the enemy to touch anyone here again suddenly. Lord we cancel. Lord we cancel in the mighty name of Jesus. Any plan of hell. Any plan of darkness any conspiracy from hell to take anyone, to touch anyone in this house again suddenly is cancelled. Any plan of the enemy to surprise us this year is cancelled. Lord, we cancel that revelation in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody pray that prayer. Cancel with the blood of Jesus. Close any door of death the enemy has opened. Close any door of death the enemy has opened against this ministry. We close those doors. We close those doors. Doors of death. Doors of accidental discharge. Sudden death, heart attack, pain, confusion. Every kind of door that the enemy has opened against the church, against your people here this morning, let this altar speak against those doors. Let this altar speak against those voices. Let this altar speak against those powers of darkness. In the name of Jesus, we close any door. Doors of death, doors of destruction, we close it right now. Every door the enemy has opened against this house. Lord, we close those doors in the name of Jesus. We close those doors in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I covenant every life here in the blood 
of the Son of God. I covenant every soul. I covenant every man. I covenant every woman in the blood of the Son of God. Oh, Laba Shakalaba. I put a seal of life. I put a seal of life on every one of us. I put a seal of life on every one of us. I put a seal of life on every one of us in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for family of Natio. One more prayer before we close. We cancel every other thing the enemy has planned to do against Natio's family. Somebody pray that prayer. Every other plan of the enemy to carry out whatever they have planned to carry out, even in this time and season, we cancel their power. We cancel their thoughts. We cancel their will. We cancel their desire. Oh, Laba Shaka Labano, Ekereto, 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 Ekereto. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. I will ask Mama Rose to conclude this prayer and then I will say something. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that we've heard today. Lord, help us to remember our own relationship with you. And Lord, to be always ready, always ready to speak the word in season and out of season. Always ready to show love and grace to people, to reach out to them with our hearts and with the love of Christ. Lord, to explain the word to them, to answer their questions, that we may be able to reveal to them the truth. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for what you have done in, their, in her life and in our lives you are doing with us. Help us to be ready, Lord, always on the alert to do your will. Therefore, you will keep us going for the length of time that we do that which is called of us. Thank you, Lord. We close today in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is good. Look at your neighbor and just let them know you love them. Encourage them. Speak to somebody. Smile for them. Hello, somebody. <laughs> good smile, good smile, good smile, good smile, smile, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. All right. I think um, Minister Me you have oh, um, Minister Me a nice few things a while ago. But I think I don't think that maybe some of us got it. Um, um, you know, I, I was asking them the other day, how do they do in Cook Island culture? They said different group comes, you know, short group, you know, different people from your, excuse me, from your, from Cook Island, different group of people, in our communities, they come, church community come, that we also have to have our own day. We ought to come before the day of burial. I don't know if some of you know that. You know? So, and um, um, so we have told them we will come in on Thursday. When is day, right? When is day by 7, 7, 7, 7 o'clock. So that means when we go there, it's like they give us the opportunity to, to do whatever we want to do. That means we could praise, share a word of encouragement. Anybody can stand up and share something or probably speak about the life of Mama Tapo. And that's going to be on Wednesday. And um, share something. If you want to come with cook something and bring. I saw one of our members last night. They cooked something and took to that place. It's a blessing to see them doing that. And um, if you want to um, bless them, you know, cook something and take to that house, please do so. But um, if you want to give something, we want everybody to give through the church because we are obligated to, when we go on Wednesday, to give them a substantial amount to, to keep going. We cannot pretend as though we don't know what is happening. Amen. So if you want to give, give through the church um, line, and we will, the, everything that is given, plus the one church will be, you know, will be taken from the post, will be given to them. If you want to cook on that Wednesday, bring, please do so. If you want to take something there, you know, maybe food before Wednesday, do so. But on Wednesday will be more appropriate if you're able to, you know, come there, you know, with something. Uh, if you want to buy a drink, to God be the glory. And um, we, they, they did mention that if, I think they are not, she's not coming home today, right? She's not going home today. They're not bringing her back today. On Monday? Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Not quite sure. Yeah. 
Okay, and they said, if they bring her home tomorrow, then we'll do the fire on, Wednesday, on Friday. If they bring her home on Monday, if they bring her on Monday, um, they don't want to do the service in that same week. Okay, all right, it's been changed now, right? Mm. All, all right, that means she might be there from now to, the, to next Sunday, might be at home in the house from now to next Sunday. So if they bring her out tomorrow, because you know, we were planning, we thought it's going to be on, on Friday, as we were earlier told. Yeah. But I think when I went to Easter, and I, I remember they said it's going to be next week yeah. after next Sunday to do her far away. I mean, I'm on Monday, right? Or Tuesday? Yeah, Monday, Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, family Ooh. service Monday. Yeah. And uh, burial Tuesday. So from tomorrow, she's going to be at home you know, in their house. So we, uh, if you're not able to go there before Wednesday, you can come on Wednesday. We, all of us need to go and honor her. You know, and we also the day she's going to be, she will be having it in the church service. The church is also encouraged to um, be there for the family. Remember, she served in this church for 11 and a half years. Amen. By this coming October, it's going to be about two years she's been serving in the church. So please don't um, be too busy in this time and season. In the last three days, I've gone there every day. Hello, somebody. So we need to show, we need to, you know, show concern. And when I got there yesterday, Pastor Pio told me, because I saw the message he sent me in the morning, and I didn't see early. So when I read it, I realized that something is resurrecting his mind again. He was telling me that I'm, I, want, I want to go there. I want my wife to come back and stuff like that. I know that, you know, he just, you know, he's. So, uh, but when Pastor Winnie went there, Pastor Winnie probably didn't know that she, he sent me that message. Few messages he sent me early morning around 5 o'clock. I like, you know at that moment it's like he's, you know, we're struggling. So when I finally got there, I realized that Pastor Winnie spoke with him, to him, and encouraged him. So when I got it, he told me that what Pastor Winnie shared with him that yesterday really encouraged him to let go. And let somebody. And so you don't know when you're encouraging somebody. So please be there on Wednesday. If you're also able to visit on your own time from time to time, you're free to go there. Remember, she's part of us. We cannot deny it. She's a full-fledged member of the kingdom of God. She doesn't belong to the world. She belongs to the kingdom. So we must be there to serve even the day of farewell. Let's be one of those. I've told the daughter and I've told Sister Me'i. You know Sister Me'i, Minister Me'i and Pastor Pio. She's the Gino sister of Pastor Pio. So she's the relief family member. So you can always inquire from her what is happening. So I've told them anything they want us to do, they should not hesitate to tell us. So we should actually be there to serve, to do whatever we can do. Any day you feel you are free, you can go there, find out if there is something you can do. You know, the day of far away, we all need to be there. It probably is going to be Wednesday on Monday next week. Amen. So what we did, we, because we thought it was going to be this Friday, we decided that we will not do commanding the month on Friday. But if, if this week is going to be free, then we have to continue yeah. as you advised when we had discussion with Pastor Pew. Yeah. That was actually encouragement when I heard you giving that encouragement, you know? Mm -hmm. You say you were talking with your husband. We said we need to carry through with what God is doing. We must not stop. Amen? So that means if they are not burying her, they some, um, if they are not doing far away, church, you know, church far away this Friday, that means we continue with our yeah. program. But if anything changes, we will let you know. So on Wednesday, there's not going to be Bible study. We're all going to be there. And our prayer continues. We need to pray for the family. You cannot say, oh, because we've lost somebody, we're not going to pray. No. God wants us to even do more. Amen? Mama Tepo wants us to pray more and worship more, love more. Amen? So God bless you. Be part of what God is doing. Encourage one another. Amen? If you've been crying, time to stop crying and start encouraging somebody. If God opened your eye where she is now, you probably will not be crying for her anymore. You'll be thanking God that she lived a good life. Amen? God bless you. Shall we stand up and close? Amen. Oh, Father, we thank you for everyone that is here today. Thank you for grace to be in this house. Thank you for all the good things you will do this week. Thank you, God, for the prayer time we're going to be having with you. Thank you, God, as we go visiting Pastor Pio family with Jesus in our mouth. And in our heart. Thank you, O God, even as we pray this morning, commanding the morning beginning on Thursday, and you give us grace to do so. And thank you for what you will do next Sunday as we gather again to love you. And thank you for the day, O God, we will be doing the farewell of your daughter. Thank you for grace. And we pray throughout, throughout this season, none of us will get hurt. None of our family members will get hurt. 
Father, everyone will be preserved in that precious, righteous blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we share the grace, may the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall live in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless everyone. Don't be in a hurry. No, go closer to